So as you can imagine, we're getting lots of phone calls and emails about traveling. What people should be thinking about, should we cancel our spring break plans, should we continue to travel during this COVID-19 situation? I'm Dr. Adam London with the Kent County Health Department and I'm joined today by Brian Hartle. Brian is a longtime epidemiologist here at the Kent County Health Department and Director of Community Health Strategy here at KCHD. Brian, what should people be thinking about as they're looking to travel, especially with spring break on the horizon? I think it's mainly about situational awareness. Understand where you're going, the risk that is in those locations where you're traveling, um, and really your risk on your own. Um, you know, if you're an individual who maybe are older, uh, 60 years of age and older, uh, keep that in mind as well. So um, I think when we hear about cases you know, in the United States, so we hear cases in California or cases in Washington, a lot of people think the entire state is impacted. Uh, but that's not always the case. You know, some certain regions of those um, uh, states are affected by cases. And so it really depends on where you're going within those states. And so I think just being aware, uh, understanding you know, where the cases are. Uh, the Johns Hopkins University has a great website where you can kind of go on there and look at the individual you know, locations of cases in those states. And so you may be going to Florida, and where you're going, there's no cases you know, within 100 miles of where you're going. So, so that situational awareness is the best, uh, best bet. Uh, but to be clear, at least in the United States, there, there are no places where we're saying don't travel there. That area is off limit. That's not happened yet, has it? No, that has not, no. Um, so the CDC puts out you know, travel warnings. Uh, and so right now there are five areas of the world where there are travel warnings, level two or level three travel warnings. That means avoiding non-essential travel or those with um, you know, high risk health conditions should not travel to those areas. And so, so you wanna make sure you're keeping track of those areas. So if you have a, a plan you know, to travel either within the country or outside of the country, always make a, a, a point to check that CDC website uh, under the travel section and find out those areas where they have level two or level three warnings. And people can find a link to that CDC uh, website and that information on accesskent.com also. Uh, Brian, talk a little bit about international travel and things that people should be thinking about, whether it's Europe or Asia uh, or anywhere outside the US. What kind of things uh, should people be doing to prepare for that travel? Same type of thing, you know, um, checking the travel warnings. Um, as I mentioned before, there are certain countries now that, you know, have travel warnings. There are other countries that have some larger numbers of cases that aren't listed on those travel warnings from the CDC. So really, again, situational awareness, identifying where you're going, uh, understanding the situation in that country, um, and determine the risk, you know, whether or not you feel comfortable uh, traveling to that country with or without a CDC travel warning to that country. And so there are some countries where if a person has a travel history, we're going to learn about that at the health department, or any local health department is going to learn about that uh, from the CDC. And those people are going to be asked to uh, spend 14 days in quarantine at home. Uh, that does not currently apply to, uh, to most of the world, right. but as you know, we're seeing hot spots and clusters of, of COVID-19 happening pretty much uh, worldwide now. Mm -hmm. um, how might that change? So people, maybe right now, aren't expecting that where they're going uh, is a hot spot for COVID-19, but uh, what might happen um, by the time they uh, want to return home? Yeah, this is an evolving situation, right? What, what we say today is, you know, tomorrow's can change. And so, you know, most people I think for spring break are traveling with, you know, about a month from now. Um, and so the situation changes and evolves very rapidly. And so uh, continue to check in with the health department, check in on the CDC's website, uh, making sure, you know, getting a pulse of the situation across the world because, you know, these things change, changes a lot. And so um, what we say today, in, in two weeks from now, it could be very different. Okay, thanks, Brian. Uh, and certainly, as Brian mentioned, you want to keep a close eye on those resources from the CDC. Uh, and you can watch accesskent.com as well for those, uh, those updates. Uh, it's also important for people to think about their own health. And these resources and these advisories can't possibly apply to everyone. So as you've heard in recent days, uh, the federal government is recommending that older people and people who have underlying health conditions maybe make different decisions about how to spend their time or where to go. So please keep those things in mind and please stay uh, up to date with the most recent recommendations. I'm Dr. Adam London with the Kent County Health Department. Please continue to like and share this page and please put your questions in the comments section below. Thank you.